Well, hello there, Catherine Langman here, back with another episode of the Product Renee Success podcast. I'm really excited about today's episode. I'm welcoming my friend and my client, Malou Villarreal, founder of the innovative nursery brand, Baby Loves Sleep. Now, like myself and like I know so many of you listeners have also experienced, Malou was inspired to create her first product, which is a baby sleeping bag because of a problem that she was experiencing in her own life and she just really was motivated to solve that problem. So her son was kind of the opposite of Malou's brand name because that baby did not like to sleep. Uh, But rather than kind of, you know, continue to exist like a sleepless zombie like so many of us uh, us mums do in the early days, Malou decided to do something about it and created a sleep suit that was a bit like a miracle cure and uh, was able to really help her son sleep through the night. And whilst giving parents and babies that gift of a good night's sleep does kind of sound like a miracle cure and you'd think that that would become an instant hit and a massive success. Uh, And of course, she has gone on to create a really thriving business both here uh, in Australia as well as internationally, New Zealand, the US. uh, And I think she's branching into uh, Europe as well. You know, so it's all going swimmingly now, but it's not as though it was all smooth sailing along the way. Not at all. So today I'm welcoming her to the show. We're going to be talking about all of those successes that that she's enjoyed and how she's gone about achieving those. But we're also going to talk about some of the really tough times and the hurdles that she's had to overcome on her journey. Because I think, you know, hearing about other people's stories along those lines and really hearing about the ups and downs and how people overcome all of that kind of stuff, it's really, really inspiring. And I know that you won't be able to help yourself. You'll love listening to Malou tell her story. So without further ado, uh, let's welcome her to the show. Welcome to the show, Malou. It's fantastic to have you here. (laughs) You're very welcome, Cass. Thank you for having me. (laughs) This is going to be fun. This is going to be awesome. So to kick us off today, uh, how about you introduce yourself to our listeners and our viewers, uh, tell, you, tell, our, tell them who you are, what's your brand and your business and what do you sell? Yep. Hi. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Malou Villarreal and I'm the owner and founder of Baby Love Sleep, which is, um, they're all baby sleep products. Um, my uh, target market really is from newborns up to toddler age up to three plus years um and basically uh i started the business um when i was still working a full-time job and it was really out of my own experience with my second son um and you know i thought to myself well you know i i I basically created this product to help me and my baby sleep better and you know the sanity Mm -hmm. um because he didn't it, love sleep, did he? <laughs> no, no. I actually thought there was something wrong with me. So, um, <laughs> typical um, mom reaction, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it was at that point where um, I, I just had, had to do something. Otherwise, it, it just wasn't working out for everybody at home. Um, but, but yeah, it was, you know, a year or two later that I, after that whole experience that I decided, you know, maybe I, I should do this as a business. Yeah. Um, and look, I must admit that um, I've always had a fire in me growing up um, to become and own my business, to, you know, have a, be, become a business owner and own my own business. But I just never really figured out, I've had lots of ideas, but never really hit that one perfect thing. And, you know, sometimes it's not even the thing you're thinking about of what to do as a business. But this one obviously came through, you know, something an experience that you know wasn't the the greatest experience oh, at the time but yeah. uh, it, that's where it led to so yeah and so many other parents have that same problem as well with their babies i know i did with my yeah first yeah baby. exactly like, yeah, it was terrible so <laughs> so really i mean you obviously uh went through that period with your baby that wasn't sleeping and you obviously got through the other side of that and he got a little bit older yeah and, so you, had you kind of created that product to use with him before yeah. you ended up starting your business? Yes, yes, yes. So that's exactly what happened. Um, so my, so you know, as a mom, and you know, other moms that are going to be listening to this um, would know that when you're desperate and sleep deprived, and you just 
trying to look for a solution to help your your baby sleep and you get better sleep as well um you know you're gonna try everything that's out in the market because like that's what you do and you google becomes your best friend you just research everything you try and find out what's going on why this is happening uh and you know the the sleep issue obviously oh let me backtrack a little bit but you know my baby was born he was a he was a perfect sleeper but mm -hmm. as soon as he hit three to four months that's when the cat napping started to happen you learn about you know the four month sleep regression and you know a bunch of other things as to why they're not sleeping so well anymore that's you know that perfect yeah thing. the perfect yeah. sleeper has just gone out the window and like what the heck is going on how can i make this better like you know is it just my child and you know you try different things you learn different things that you've read on the internet um and so what in the end what i ended up doing was i had grabbed a bunch of different aspects of different products that i tried myself but weren't quite working how I wanted them to work and I kind of put them all together and created my own design for this product that I had obviously come up with yeah it was my very first product when I started the business I started with one product yeah um, is that the one? have you got one there that, yes reading? so so yeah. that is the one that is what I created it's the swaddle transitioning made easy yeah. so what I figured what was happening with my child was that he was at that stage where he was obviously still needing the security of being swaddled yeah. but at the same time babies grow and they develop developmentally they're not meant to be swaddled no, they become toddlers yeah. exactly they start rolling over it becomes unsafe um and in his case he needed to be he needed the security but it was not enjoying being restricted anymore and so what product was out there yeah. at the time no. zero <laughs> So I had to find and create something myself, which I had done. And wh when I did that, that actually somehow magically, uh, you know, even I was surprised about how, how it worked, how it had yeah. actually worked. So I thought, okay, maybe it's a fluke. Maybe it's, you know, maybe uh, who knows, right? But as soon as I, uh, you know, took that off, he would again fall back into the non-sleeping, you know, yeah, just not happy, not settled. And so I had to create, a, you know a couple of my own ones for personal use yeah. which my mom helped me create with her sewing machine yeah. um, and it was only basically when my child had reached he you know the one year old two years old that I decided to you know why don't I if other people if I'm having this problem other people must be having this problem as well it's, it's probably not just me so um sure enough I thought you know what 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 am I gonna lose it's something I'm really passionate about it's um it's it's worked for me. It's it's a story that it's my own story. It's my own product, my own design, and I kind of you know went with that really. Um, yeah, and here I am. <laughs> you are. Well, yes. Yeah. But um, how, tell us how you kind of got moving initially. So did you tell us about that kind of uh, like initial yeah launch or pre-launch even yeah yeah yeah. Okay, so look, you know, um, I was I, I mentioned that I was still working a corporate job, and I, I had already made plans to okay, I'm gonna be taking you know twelve months maternity leave, and so who knows what's gonna happen, you know? And I was contracting, so I wasn't actually in a permanent role, or you know, so uh, that meant that at some point I would have to start looking for you know work contract work again, which mind you. In you know in the in the years that I'd been working as a contractor, I that wasn't a, never been an issue for me. I I quickly found work all the time. But I thought you know this time I really want to be able to kind of um you know work in a way that I can build a business um so that I didn't maybe didn't have to go back to work. That was always my dream, right? With even with my first son, I'd already been scheming up what can I do, what business can I do, and of course as I said, um it was only with the second son. So with this second son, I had already started a website, but I was doing a little bit because I'm a little bit arty and I, I'm kind of like a graphic designer that never quite made it <laughs> into, into that career. Yeah. So I, I, I love designing things, right? And you'll yeah. see that with all my products. Um, but what I did was I did start a business kind of halfway through the pregnancy, but it was designing, um, you know, those little keepsake um, birth keepsakes. Um, that's what I did. But, you know, soon enough, I realized this isn't going to make me any money. Because <laughs> like, business. yeah, I mean, how can you scale that, right? You can't. 
it's not because as long as you're the only person creating and designing those things, that's just never going to work. But I thought, you know what, maybe I can expand that store uh, and start selling other products. Um, but, you know, before I even got there, I already the universe, the universe threw this curveball because yeah. my baby was born and I started having these problems. And then that's when, you know, I thought, you know what, why don't I con create, like convert this business into what this business is now, Baby Love Sleep. Yeah. So I love that, that story. Yeah, so that, that that's something you didn't you didn't even know. <laughs> didn't know you had that practice business. So there you go. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't even mention the names. So. <laughs> no, fair enough. And no. so, how did you get moving then? So obviously you'd you'd made your own um, products to use on your son. Yeah. Um, and then you know you have to go through that whole process of finding yeah. a manufacturer yeah. and getting some customers to try them out. So yeah, how did you do all yeah. that? Look, I'll admit, because obviously that that was like all foreign to me. Like, how how would you even know where to go? Who the, the I had I look, I I had a couple of friends that were working in that industry and I kind of reached out and sort of asked, you know, how how do you have any contacts? You know, who can I and I had used someone local, um, that obviously they um had suppliers in in China. So I I tried, I I went down that path and I must admit that was my very first batch of products I did get through China. Okay. Um, my products are, are now, I, I and I went from a series of suppliers. So that supplier is number, I wouldn't even mention number how many that's. <laughs> okay. You've got but yeah. you know, it took, yeah, it took a long time for me to find the right supplier who I have been working now for, you know, a couple of years um, because right. look, I'm only in my fifth to sixth year of business. So, you know, uh, this supplier that I'm working with now, I'm, I've been working with the last two two years, two to three years, um, and I'm really very happy with them. But the point is that, you know, I, I didn't find the right supplier at the beginning. And sometimes, you know, you go through that journey of getting disappointed because the product you, you know, gave to them as a prototype, as a sample, didn't quite come back the same way. Um, so, you know, you jump from one supplier to another and then you until you find the right one and then that that's the moment of gold put it in your pocket and yes, that's stick with it i think the lesson there for all of us is because i mean it's <laughs> such a familiar journey i went through it too you know it's like you just have to get things moving sometimes and and not yeah. expect it's going to be perfect straight away exactly keep chipping away at it until you actually get to the right one yeah yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely so you know even though i felt that the first batch of products that I received were not quite, you know, exactly how I wanted them to be. They, the functional, functionally, they worked how they were designed to work. Yeah. Um, and they solved the problem that they were designed to solve. So from that point, that business, you know, kind of just moved along mm -hmm. until obviously I could iron out those little things until I could get it perfect. Look, I don't know any business that has still reached that perfect stage. I don't think you ever will. Because I, I still feel like there's so many things that still need, you know, to be quite, okay, I'm nearly perfect, but, and that's good. So I can now move on to something else that needs the, yeah. the extra work. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, even Apple, you know, they still release new phones every year. So clearly they're iterating and making things more perfect. Exactly, exactly. The, yeah. The and even I'm, and even with, with my product that I designed initially, I've even made improvements to those. Product, yeah. um, you know, added little things here and there, just listening to my customers about, you know, the feedback that you get. And I'm always, you know, consulting with with my customers. Like I have a small little mom, mom group that I kind of put my ideas to and, you know, they give me the feedback. So I'm not creating something that I think is great, but I'm creating something that actually people want. So, yeah, yeah. 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 That's a great tip, I think, for anyone who's, you know, wanting to start something or they're still, you know, yeah. the early stage of their business. Yeah, and and that's how I actually came up with my other products. So obviously with this first products, which is called the Sleepy Hugs, mm. um, that was my own design. Mm. Uh, and, and the rest of my products have really followed the same similar design. So they're almost like an evolution yeah. uh, from this Sleepy Hugs. Yeah. Um, but, the, you know, the next iteration, which is the hands in and out, was actually come out from a consultation with my um, customers. And then with the cozy toddler suit where it's got legs, again, yeah. another, you know, another result of consultation where 
oh, I wish you had a sleeping, that sleeping bag. I wish the sleepy hags had the legs. And I'm like, well, yeah, we can make that happen. So, <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. That's actually helped you to retain the, the lifetime of your customer for longer as well, which is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yep. Can you, because I don't remember, but can you remember <laughs> when you first uh, started, you know, really marketing and selling the business, uh, the products rather, was it purely e-commerce or did you go into wholesale as well? Early no, days? no. So at the beginning, um, it was purely e-commerce. Yeah. Um, and look, you know, I was a little ambitious because I thought, you know what, let's try and hit both here. Because like, hey, why not, right? It's your free time. <laughs> yeah. Hey? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And so, you know, what? maybe that's sometimes my problem. I just try to do everything all at once, even uh, though. We all do that a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, women anyway. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, I, I, I started looking on the internet. I started reaching out to a couple of people. And look, I'm very lucky that even in that first year, I had reached out to two people that happened to be partners, even though they were from different. So one in Australia and one in New Zealand, yeah. um, who who then became in, when I introduced myself. And, you know, this is in my first year, right? I didn't even have my other products. Mm. Um, and I, I basically introduced myself and what my my new product was and all of that and I was surprised that they had actually come back um nobody else did but them mm -hmm. and they were very interested and you know they thought let's do a trial so from that um I just thought yes jump on it and you know um the one in New Zealand ended up becoming my New Zealand distributor so you know that that sometimes you just gotta go out and you know and and you can oh, you ready it. <laughs> yeah, you can tailor the whole strategy. Sometimes, you know, you can do a whole beautiful strategy yeah. and, and wait until that you get that strategy all down pat. Or you can just, you know, go go for it. And if it doesn't work out, okay, then you work out, well, why why didn't it work? Yeah. So, you know, I guess there's two approaches, right? <laughs> yeah, there is. And, I mean, it served you well to just take that. Yeah. And, um... now, now, however, <laughs> now, however, I think being a little bit wiser, I definitely would um, go down and the track of planning it a little better. Um, Cause you know, at the end of the day, I am building a brand where I do want to come across as, you know, um, the brand, a trusted brand, a brand that's got, you know, a, a, a good backing, a good foundation. Um, and I really want to not just send an email willy nearly like I did in my first year. So <laughs> I want to have all those systems and processes in place so that when when I do, you know, send out that, you know, reaching out process to new stockists, um, I do come across as, you know, on par with a with a bigger brand. And I will say I'm nowhere near what the other bigger brands are at. Um, I don't feel that, but I I that's my my goal to be able to be on par with, with that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the products definitely are, and it's you're just you know still yeah through that process of scaling. So yes, yes, exactly. Exactly, yes. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about that kind of crazy juggle of, uh, you know, that you went through for several years of running the business alongside your big job and your young family, because um, it was, it was yeah. crazy. <laughs> it was, it was. Um, look, you know, it started out with a few late nights here and there. Um, and it, you know, within, I think within the third year, it had escalated to, um four nights out of five I would be working past midnight mm. because when else would you be able when else when if you're at a corporate job from nine to five and then you get home you spend time with the kids you do dinner kids are in bed and then you you know have a little rest do the dishes because we all have to do dishes I mean yes there's a dishwasher but <laughs> if you're like me <laughs> um you know but that so yeah so night times became my my second um, life, if you like, um, I felt like I was living a double life, really. Uh, yeah. And no one at my work knew. There was only like a handful of people that knew that I had this little side business. But and they and really, I wanted them to think, I don't know why, but I wanted to think, yeah, it's it is just a side business because I didn't want them to get the impression that work. I was serious with my work. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I but in my second shift that night, um, I was working like a good four hours to yeah. six hours in the night. Yeah. Gosh, I still remember, you know, going to work the next day, having only just a three to three hours max, three to four hours sleep. Yeah. Um, and boy, did I look it. 
you know? up for too long, I reckon. I mean, oh, look, it, look sure. I tell you, it, it's not sustainable. So for anyone now, and I know, I remember you used to tell me this, you should be careful of your health, be careful, all that. And, you know, I, I and yes, you listen to it, you know, you have to be careful, but, but you know. Equally, the work was there and it was kind of driving it for you. I mean, you yeah, had to. Yeah, if you didn't do it, yeah. yeah. I felt like. Up. That's right. I felt like if I didn't do this, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. So I I felt like I didn't really have much of a choice. But yeah. now one advice I do give people is I, I say the same thing you do. It's like, it's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Look after your health um, or, or change something. Put a time but, limit on it. But at, at the very yeah. 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 And so you, you, you took the big leap of faith. Uh, was it last, before it, last Christmas? It, yeah, it's and coming to nearly a year now. Yeah, yeah. And yes. you feel better now. You're getting some better sleep, and uh, I am rest. Good. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, look, I knew because people tell you know, obviously, other business friends tell have told me, you know, when you make that, when you take that leap, trust me, you're gonna think, why didn't you do it sooner? I mean, look, there's many re there's reasons that I could talk about forever here as to the timing of you know when I had to do that um but and you know we all have our journey and so this is mine right so um but yes it's true that as soon as I took that leap um just everything just started to fall into place um you know including just how the universe you know threw things at me to kind of point you know take me down the direction of stop doing everything mm -hmm. you've just got a you've got a marketing team here who know what they're doing why aren't you know let them Happy do it time. for you because you're not the expert <laughs> <laughs> you know um you know as much as you like to think you are yeah. i mean sure we there's a level of expertise but ultimately there's a whole team that can you know draw on different experiences from the different clients that you have that you know is basically and you're there to look after my interests so exactly. yeah it, it yeah. was that whole journey of you know again the universe really forced me into taking that leap too because I could have taken that leap a lot sooner last year yeah. but I, in my head I thought no I can still do this I can still do this I can still make this work us women do that I, I've I started know. saying to people does Jeff Bezos do all the things in Amazon <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly exactly yep yeah uh, yeah, so yeah play to our strengths at the end of the day don't we Yes. Yep. Yep. To our detriment. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> but tell us about uh, launching internationally, because I know, like, you, you did it quite early, and I know why, but and I'll let you tell the story. But that's really ramped up as well this year, hasn't it? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yes. And and look again, me being rebellious, me, I didn't listen to you. <laughs> I don't even remember what I said. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah so I did hit I did hit I did try and hit the international market again me being ambitious and because of the opportunity was there for me to do it mm -hmm. I all I'm the type of person that if the opportunity is there I'm gonna grab it by the horn and I'm I'm just gonna do it whatever whether it works or it doesn't I'll just get my feet my foot in there and just make it happen you know I kind of have this saying that sometimes you've just got to take that opportunity and make it and, and then it will happen it will happen for you yeah. but sometimes you know and and I, I did read this somewhere that sometimes the opportunity is there people don't take it and so and nothing ever happens so you know what's the worst that could happen you could, <laughs> yeah what's the worst that could happen well you fail right <laughs> so I yeah <laughs> yeah so in my case in the, the international you know going international I haven't failed I, I wouldn't say that it just hasn't taken off at that early stage, the way that I would have wanted to, but yeah. for good reason, because I was trying to build two business markets, if you like, at the same time, and there was only one of me. So, yeah. you know, um, I didn't have, you know, I didn't have you guys behind me working the two businesses at the t at the time. Um, so, although although I I went ahead and launched that business in 2018. Um, Yes, I was getting sales here and there, you know, Instagram exposure. That's maybe that's where the sales were coming from because I certainly wasn't doing any Facebook marketing. No, um, I think there was, yeah, I don't think we were doing anything like that. No, no. Um, and, and look, you know, uh, for me, I, I guess, look, there's two ways you can think about it. Um, you can do what I did and it, it's just going to plot, plot along and nothing, not much is going to happen <laughs> unless you have the energy, the time 
and you know the support to back that up um which i didn't but i thought you know what it's fine because while i build the australian business at least that one's already there and whatever exposure that's getting well that that's okay with me so i was okay with that mm -hmm. um so again it was only this uh this year where i had your team basically look at both businesses and as soon as you took over the us well that's also pretty much doubled in sales you know and look the us is a hard market yeah. um i can tell whoever's watching this right now <laughs> You know, yes, it's a huge market, but there's also a lot of competition. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of eyeballs and, and there's also a lot of things in front of those eyeballs and it's hard to get into. But, you know, you just you got to go in. If that's something you want to do, I wouldn't stop you from doing it. Go do it, but just go do it with open eyes. Yeah, um, really wise advice there. Uh, and I think uh, I'm right in thinking that very soon you're actually going over there to do a trade show or an expo or something uh, like that. Yes, I'm I'm going over there um, at the end of this month mm -hmm. um, for the Prego Expo. So the Prego Expo is like one of the biggest uh, consumer expos in America for baby space. Um, so that's very exciting because I, you know, I will, I, I had done those expos already, but not me personally. I have obviously someone in on the ground in the U.S. that does it for me. Um, but this time I thought, you know, it'll be really good for me to go over there because um, it's a big one in L.A. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's a two day one. They usually only run it for one day. So they're changing the format for the L.A. one to include day one for buyers and media and influencers. So. I thought that would be a really good. I know that. That's so I know. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of double whammy, right? <laughs> it's That's like a trade awesome. day one is a trade show, and then day two is consumer. So I thought, yeah, I'm gonna go for this one because again, unless you're there, you don't know what opportunities will open up for you. Um, and look, who needs another? Who needs a, a holiday? Me, right? <laughs> who needs a holiday at the end of November? So me, I do. My family. So we're gonna go. <laughs> That's very exciting. And, I, you know, I think for anyone watching, I think that, you know, getting to the point where you can take opportunities like this to go to a show and just physically be there in the region. Yeah. Really help with the visibility and, and the demand for your brand. So yeah. Yeah. I don't know how that goes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And look, you know, it also gives me an opportunity to actually suss out because I've done expos and trade shows here where I actually get to talk to the moms and the, the moms to be and you know, I get to interact with them and get a feel for, you know, all that, right? Yeah. Well, I don't really know the U.S. market that well, but that's going to give me an opportunity to talk to, you know, the moms and the moms to be over there and and even the, you know, the retailers, the buyers to see what are they looking for and actually be, you know, sometimes you have to be the one to market your own brand yeah. face and to face. Get that when... messaging and that connection just right. Correct, yeah. correct. yes, yep. So good. Yep. <laughs> now, I want to take a slightly different tack, if you are okay with it. Uh, you know, all of us in business, you know, we go through some hardships as, you know, it's, it's really fun to just focus on the, the good things and the growth and the, the transformation, but sometimes things are hard. And I know you've been through a couple of tough things. So do you want to tell us about one or two that you've experienced? <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. The ones where I've nearly fallen off the cliff or I reckon I had fallen off the cliff, maybe broken a leg at the same time and, but limped, found my way to climb up the cliff back up with a broken leg. So yeah. <laughs> Great analogy. <laughs> yeah. I described that experience. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I look, um, I've had, I think I'll just touch on one of the bigger ones, uh, obviously a supplier um, experience where that's gone gone wrong, horribly wrong, um, where, you know, I, I've had an, an entire, nearly an entire batch of faulty um, product and yeah. one where, okay, I thought I could salvage um, and actually, you know, there was an opportunity to there was still hope to not just throw them in the bin, but I could actually fix them myself yeah. because my supplier was not putting their hand up to help me. So I thought, you know, at least send me the tools. So they did. They sent me the tools and I ended up fixing every uh, product that went out, yeah. uh, you know, and that, that was hard because that was, I, I reckon that was, you know, the start of the many late nights because yeah. it was trying to fix product that was going out and then also working in front of the computer. But yeah. Uh, it got so bad that um, obviously the batch that 
ended up going to my New Zealand distributor. Well, I couldn't go there to fix it, could I? So I ended up having to, you know, buy back the product. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the whole thing, and it cost me a lot of money, really. Yeah. Uh, you know, to the point where I almost really questioned myself about, should I even go on? Because this is just, you know, just going to wipe me out. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it really nearly did. Yeah. It got to the point where I couldn't even find the money to pay for the next shipment that was coming in of new product. So um, I, 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 some, I look back and I think, how the heck did I get out of that? But I, I did. I managed, I managed to get out of it. I, I think I borrowed from Paul Pitt. No, I didn't even go to my family. My family had no idea about this, wow. this problem. Because yeah. that's one thing I, I didn't want to burden them or yeah. make them feel like, oh, no, she's going to come and ask for money. Because yeah. obviously nobody wants that, right? Yeah. Um, but look, you know, somehow I just hustled my way out of it. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I didn't hustle my way out of it. I didn't get out of it. I was fully in it. And I found a way to kind of, you know, I guess swim out of it where I solved the problems. I didn't just get out of it. It's not like the problem went away, but I was able to kind of overcome it, um, yeah. Yeah. you know, financially. And I, again, through fixing the product, there were some product that did have to get thrown out, but the product that I thought, you know what, instead of me going bankrupt, because I basically wiped out an entire batch of product, I fixed some of them and I still got some money back. So it was a slow process, a slow and hard process to kind of, get through that but I, I got there eventually and I reckon it set me back maybe a good two years of yeah. where I could I, where I am now I could have been maybe two years ago maybe I don't know maybe I, right who knows I don't I know think, I probably said this <laughs> to you at the time but you know I went through an experience like that and I I don't think I've actually met any productpreneur who's manufacturing <laughs> who hasn't had something like that happen um, which is not to scare people off, but, you know, it, it forces you through experience to yeah. tighten up all of your systems and processes and, and your, uh, you know, the way you work with, and for you, I guess, finding a better supplier and, and all yeah. of that. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. And things have been so much better as a result. With yes, yes, and yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. And look, it was the easy thing to do um, is to just give up and walk away. But I, I, I know the fighter in me just kind of went, no, I'm not ready to fall over just yet. No. <laughs> so now I, mean, I feel like I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> any particular piece of advice that you might impart on somebody um, who might be, you know, feeling like they're going through a tough time? Yeah. Look, I think hang in there. Definitely hang in there. Don't give up. Um, don't give up unless... You've, you've absolutely, you know, opened every door, um, lifted every stone, uh, you know, just exhausted all the, exhausted all the avenues. And, and you think it, unless it's going to affect your health in a bad way, obviously your health is more important. But I think, you know, don't give up, hang in there. If you really want to make this happen for your business, I think these are just challenges that throw come your way, um, you know, basically to, to kind of groom you for not for there's worse to come but to prepare you for if this is something I should have you know been really careful about well then next time in other situation you might think twice you might really uh you know kind of learn from that situation because I the way I learned from that was really to test out every every product and to maybe not order so much now my my supply schedule is in small batches so yeah. that so that if something is not right um, then, then I can still hold my supplier accountable. I, they can, you know, I can tell them, well, no, I'm not that I'm not taking that batch of products because this one I got is faulty. You know, there's so many ways to, you learn from it and you put systems in place so that you prevent that from happening again. Yeah. Yeah. Really good advice there. <laughs> All right. I want to dive into our kind of three final rapid, uh, rapid fire style <laughs> questions if you're uh, up for it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The first one I want to ask you is what advice, what's one piece of advice that you would give yourself back when you were in startup mode? Yeah. Okay. So when I was in startup mode, I think I would have, uh, one advice would be to just stay, take things slow, slower, because <laughs> I was always doing things like in a hurry and, you know, just wanting everything to happen right away and to, you know, all of that. Um. And like, think about, think more about 
what what things that I the things that I know now and I know for us for someone new in a startup phase you don't know these things because you don't know what you don't know yeah but and and look you know even finding you as a coach well you know how would I have known that you had existed then right <laughs> yeah uh, how would I have known that there were business Facebook business groups that I could join in at yeah. that time yeah. so you don't that's a really hard one but yeah you know um <laughs> And we all have to learn from our own experience. I think. Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. We, we try and take tips from other people as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So I don't know if I've really answered the question and given anybody good advice. Uh, well, you know, maybe hard not, one. not feeling the need to be impatient about having the uh, the big end result immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. Piece of advice. I think. Mm. Yeah, but look, definitely. Um, so uh, let me fast forward a little bit. So if you were all, you, if if someone was already in their that startup journey, um, and had already you know found a group of business networks, I think the advice would be to definitely lean into the experts, because again, going back to you don't know what you don't know. So the best way to learn that is through the people that have already been there. So one of the things that I know I discovered really early on, and I'm really quite lucky I did, was, you know, those business network groups and, and you know, finding you. Because, you know, if it wasn't for that one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, uh, who knows where I'd be today, really, honestly, Kath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would just say that straight out. I probably wouldn't be in this warehouse. Yeah. I probably would still be working a corporate job. I don't know where I'd be. Or I'd be doing it really hard. <laughs> who knows? Who but, knows? yeah. Um, second question for you, what do you reckon is one of the best decisions that you have made in your business? And it can be from any stage of that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Look, the best decision, I mean, the best one, which has made me the happiest so far is me leaving my corporate job. Um, yep. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, in, in so many ways that I'm sure many, you know, mom or women business owners would, would relate to because, Firstly, and especially for those that are moms, you know, it's just given you that whole freedom. You know, you've just ticked that box now. You've really, you've achieved the goal of, I can now work um, a business or work and bring in some financial contribution to the household and still have time with for my kids and not be stuck in a nine to five, that flexibility. So that's what makes me the happiest. Um, you know, I take my kids to school. I I come home, I do work. I plan my day around, you know, the school pickups, um, all of that, which, by the way, my husband's doing school pickup pick up this afternoon. <laughs> so, yep. Um, but, you know, just the flexibility of uh, being able to and, and the enjoyment, the enjoyment that I get because it's my business. It's I'm passionate about it. It's something I love. And, you know, it, I didn't I, I've been through that whole hardship. Well, I, I know there's many more to come, but. I've been through one of the hardest things that I've already faced and I've overcome it. It's really rewarding to know that I was able to get there and yeah. still be here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's so many happy things I can tell you about leaving corporate job. <laughs> I feel like you've just kind of answered my last question, which was okay. why you love <laughs> being a business owner the most. Yeah, well, okay, yeah, you're right. So that, that, that kind of has, I, I have kind of answered that already for myself personally. I mean, other people might, have a different answer to that but for me it's that that whole flexibility I call the shots I'm I can be the employer that I want to be a yeah. good one a really good one having worked you know as an employee before now I, I can actually contribute to the economy I'm you know I've I've, I've employed my sister like pro officially on the books and all of that so she's really happy and I I, I call her the boss she's the boss <laughs> she's the boss of the warehouse so you know um there is a boss too <laughs> yeah, yeah. um and I love her because she's like amazing you know um I don't know what I'd do without her so uh, I'd find myself in the same boat if I had to do all the pick and pack yeah uh, you know, working the late nights again so I'm just really lucky you to have these people around me that yeah that can support me and I can support them back so yeah yeah, love yeah. That. and do you kids <laughs> enjoy having mom around a bit more now and my mom also. So my mom comes on a Monday. So we all get to catch up once a week. Yeah. So she comes and helps, you know, pack because Mondays are bus busiest coming from the weekend. Yeah. So she comes, um, she and I packs, my sister's the boss. 
So, and, and yeah, it's a nice little catch up once a week. We get to see each other with my mom. Um, yeah. So it's good. It's good. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Final thing. Do you want to give yourself a bit of a plug? Where can our listeners and viewers go to find uh, you and your brand online? Where, yeah. where should they go? Okay, so I have two websites, obviously, for Australian viewers. Um, you can find me uh, on babylovesleep.com.au. And if you're international, you can also hop on to babylovesleepco.com. So, yep, that, that's, that's it. <laughs> yeah, excellent. And uh, we're going to share the URLs and we'll share your social handles as well with our podcast show notes. So if anyone wants to go and connect with Malou, go and check it out. Yes. Thank you so much, Kath. <laughs> Thanks for having, coming on the show and having a great chat with me today. I've really enjoyed it.